Hi guys, my name is Patrick Poon, and today I'll be talking about a machine learning project on song popularity prediction. This is the overview of the presentation, a little bit on EDA, then we'll move on to machine learning models and setup, results, model deployment, and future works. This is a research prompt. Can we predict the popularity of a song? We're using the Spotify song dataset here, and I downloaded it from Kaggle. For this specific project, we're only limiting to 2010 and 2020 uh, time frame. So our records from 160,000 160, tracks re is reduced to 27,000. And each track has about 18 different features and our target is the popularity score. A correlation heat map was done using Pandas profiling. Uh, here we can kind of look at which variables are codependent. Next is the Y popularity. This is our target. And from this distribution, it looks like there's a lot of zeros. And it is good for uh, what we do machine learning modeling. Now let's talk about the models and setup. Scikit-learn was used here. And a lot of stuff is, is used, it's uh, done using pipeline. Uh, we do a lot of pre-processing in pipeline. Then we feed in the machine learning models and we do cross-validation and we look at lots of metrics. And then lastly, we pick a final model. Uh, the, test the train test split is really generic, 80% using uh, for the train set and 20% for the test set. Uh, this is just kind of like the code uh, to for pre-processing, the data is separated into categorical and continuous data. The categorical data was, you know, we, we, we need to do some uh, transformation. So one hot en en encoder was used, and also we use simple imputer. Uh, we find the most frequent uh, variable uh, if there's anything that's missing. For con for con continuous data, we're using standard scalar. Uh, if there's missing data, we're using k near nearest neighbors. Uh, in cell 12, we're creating a preprocessor using column transformer. Uh, this column transformer basically just takes all the categorical data and all the continuous data, and then we put it in kind of like a preprocessing variable, then we can feed it in the pipeline next. Uh, now we're choosing the machine learning models. Because this is a regression uh, problem, uh, here we're picking linear regression models and also ensemble trees. Uh, these, are the these, are, these are the hybrid parameters that we searched. For Rich and Huber, because they're from the same family, they have the same uh, similar alpha uh, uh, hy hyper parameters. Um, alphas here represent how generalized you want for your model. And epsilon for Huber um, just kind of um, um, you, you tune how robust you want the model is to outliers. And bagging and random forest have similar um, hybrid parameters as well. Uh, and estimators, it's basically um, how many trees you want in your model. And maximum features is how many features per song you want. Uh, you, you, you can choose more, you can choose all, you can choose less. And random forest Sample split, samples leave, maximum depth, um, just changes how the structure of, um, of your random forest looks like. Um, we're using random randomized search CV. A cross validation It's using fivefold. Um, scoring here, RMSE and MSE, but ultimately we're using RMSE here because we want to penalize um, biggest law, biggest loss error. So. If your prediction and the uh, uh, the true values are really far off, we want to penalize that more, and that fits our um, our goal. Uh, this is just kind of the, the code for um, using the cross validation, using the pipeline, and um, try to find and search for the best hyperparameters. Alphas and epsilons are in the search space, and the final pipeline. Uh, we have a transform target regressor, and that's for transforming the Y, our popularity score. From EDA, we know that it's not a normal distribution, so transforming this um, 
with an output distribution set as normal. This will help the linear regression models. And lastly, you know, we use randomized search uh, CV, and then we, we put the scoring as RMSC. And here are the results. Rich and Huber perform similarly because they're from the same family. Uh, um, bagging and random forest, uh, they perform similar as well. And the last model that we're using, the final model, uh, we're using bagging because it has the best uh, CV score. This final model uses the hybrid parameters. Then we retrain the model using this, um, the backing regressor with, with these hybrid parameters. Um, and then we look at the test set. The test set here we're using MAE, mean absolute error, because it makes more sense in a business setting um, to look at the absolute, the absolute error. For instance, here, the popularity score, we could be 17 off for 17 higher or lower. So now let's talk about deployment. Uh, once we have this finalized model, we want to we want someone to use it. So we're using Streamlit here. So in order for, for this to work, we need um, two different Python scripts. One here is basically the same one. The same thing that we did. We did pre-processing. Uh, we, we did some piping. Um, and then we find we take the final model, and and we need to um, save it as a pickle file. We we do pickle dot dump. Once we have this pickle file, then we can create our Streamlit uh, application. Streamlit application looks something like this. Um, here we're using Markdown to kind of uh, create this text, and then we create the um, user input features. Uh, it's, a, it's a sidebar like this. Once we created this um, us user input, then we can um, create this plotly plot, uh, basically taking the user input and then see what they look like. Uh, lastly here, we load from the saved pickle file, the last model, and then we predict the user input features. So we can look at it here you know if we uh, change the acousticness change the stuff uh, we can kind of change the year change the tample and then um, this will refit and we sorry predict uh, what that song popularity is so here it looks like it's 74. so this is just a quick demo of um, streamlit So lastly, uh, future works. What can we do to improve this? We can definitely do more feature engineering. What if we create ratios of different audio features, for instance, like danceability and tempo? That that ratio could, you know, provide could provide us better or worse uh, predictions. Feature Im importance. Which which feature con con contributes the most to popularity? And lastly. How can we tie that our metric to, to business? Can we find a correlation be between popularity and Billboard Top 100 chart? So then we can um, kind of have some um, benchmark of how well our model is, pre is uh, behaving. So this is a quick recap. We did some EDA and we looked at different machine learning models. We have some results. We, we uh, deployed it uh, using Streamlit. And then we talked a, a little bit on the, fu the, fu the future works. Well, thank you for your time. You can find my contact information in the description box below. Thank you.